Hello everyone, it is February 13th, 2024. It's Tuesday, it's Harp Tuesday. So I've just had a good practice session. I'm getting ready to tour down in Australia and New Zealand. And I wanted today to talk about what I do to prepare a concert program. So of course, when you're a long ways out, it's I'll do what I would do in any case. And what I would always suggest is first kind of learning the bare bones of the piece and then doing lots of sectional work, doing lots of slow, loud, strong work and practice. But now it's getting quite close. And in fact, I did a dry run, as it were. I just performed the same concert program in Mexico about a week and a half ago and getting ready to head to Australia. So what I'm doing here now is trying to, to really polish it and make sure it's solidly in my memory and solidly in my fingers. I also have to do some triage because I don't have unlimited time in each day to practice. And so I'm going to talk through the pieces in the program and what I'm doing with them. So the first piece in the program is my arrangement of the Bach, Toccata and Fugue, which, uh, you know, ah, so dramatic, right? And this is a piece that I uh, played for several years, and I think I ended up recording that music video of it in 2020, but I haven't played it since. And the first piece in the program, I always feel, should be a piece that kind of grabs attention. It's a nice uh, starting piece, exciting. Something that you feel you could play with cold hands, just in case. And also something that is quite solid in the memory. So oftentimes I'll use the 4A impromptu. Just because I learned that as a teenager and it's it's so ingrained in my fingers and my memory and it's, it's quite an impressive piece, but uh, for me a really comfort piece, a good piece to start with. So the Bach Toccata and Fugue, the Toccata, the opening bit, you know, all this, is really solidly in my fingers and memory. But the Fugue is a bit scary because there's a lot of pedal changes and I always find Bach a bit tricky to memorize. So for this, what I'm doing is I'm in the fugue, I'm working backwards in sections. So I, I take a little section where I know exactly the pedal setting. I know the starting notes. And I'll do some practice starting from there until the end of that section. At this point, maybe two repetitions. Ideally, maybe three or four, but for now, I only have time for two. And then I'll go back to the previous section, which will end with a section I just started with, just that slight overlap. And I find for me that is a better way to help solidify the memory than going... So in other words, if you have section A, B, C, and D, rather than going A twice, B twice, C, D, I'll go D, C, B, A. That somehow sticks better for me. As I practice, I'm also trying to be really consciously aware of what is happening, what the, where the pedals are, what's coming up next, where the feet are. Oh, it's this key right now. It's the equivalent of this key or that key. So not just letting the muscle memory take over, not letting the hands just take over, but really being conscious and aware so that if I'm performing and I'm suddenly like, wait a minute, where am I? What is this? Where are the pedals? Ah, I can say, oh yeah, right here, it's this. And again, also potentially, uh, even though it's from memory, I might be practicing sometimes, sometimes, not so often, but sometimes with the music in front of me, trying to build a visual memory of what it looks like on the page. So I'll do that, working backwards, skipping some sections which are, I feel are really comfortable and solid, but being careful not to skip them too often. And, and so that's the, the Bach. When I have time, I'll also do the whole fugue with the metronome on occasion, because while well, there are some sections where you can maybe take a breath, it should be a consistent tempo throughout the whole fugue, and I want to make sure that I'm actually doing that. I think I am, but it's good to double check with the metronome and recording yourself, which I'll talk about in a moment. So there's the Toccata and Fugue, and it's really fun to bring, to bring that back. And and yeah, really enjoying that. Then the Chopin uh, Raindrop Prelude, and I did an episode talking about practicing that. Now this one and the Renier piece symphonique, which finishes the first half, are pieces that I performed in the fall in Europe. So they're kind of in the fingers and there's this huge psychological difference, for me at least, between the first performance of a concert program, no matter how much you've practiced in the practice room, 
the first performance and say the fifth performance. Because the more you do it, the more you start to know that, okay, I can get through this piece. Uh, oh yeah, the memory is solid. Or, oh, if something happens, I know how to get out of it. And at a certain point, it's not that the hands maybe know it better, but psychologically you feel more and more secure that everything will go well. And so, yeah, it really, it's a really nice feeling and it's hard to achieve that outside of doing those performances. And so this Chopin and the Renier, then I did have that experience in the fall, but it's been a while. So they're feeling solid, but the danger is that maybe I neglect them. Again, trying to triage, I only have limited time. What am I gonna practice? And so they actually, both of those two were, the last fall was the first time I performed them. They're new to me in that sense. Now the Renier I've spent much more time on because it's much harder. And so for the Chopin, it's just making sure that I spend enough time and there's a couple spots um, that the pedals are a bit tricky and just making sure that my memory is good there. So yeah, making sure I spend enough time, but generally not going through the whole piece apart from the end of my practice session, which I'll talk about in a moment. Then I'm doing, ah, I'm doing, uh, and it's a beautiful piece, by the way, the Chopin. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm happy to be doing it again. It's, uh, I will be doing a music video of it uh, at some point. So then I'm doing my Uncharted Shores. And this is funny because this is a piece that I wrote on lever harp and it has an E natural. So we're in the key of E flat, but this E is set to natural on the lever harp and it never changes. There are no lever changes, easy. But on the pedal harp for once, it's so much harder because we have to keep changing from E natural to E flat, or maybe using an F flat in place of an E natural, or a D sharp in place of an E flat. So I played this last fall in a duo concert I did with, uh, with Lena Rummel, the German harpist, but it wasn't memorized. And so here now I've had to work on it, memorize it because the whole concert program is memorized, and get used to those spots with those pedal changes and really solidify it in my hand and my memory, it's a little bit different because I had, I have memorized it in the past on lever harp, but getting used to those differences. Uh, yeah, so anyway, so that one now at this point is feeling pretty good. A couple spots that I try to just make sure I really do know what's happening there. A couple physical spots to, to just work on, but not spending too much time on this one apart from the run through at the end of the day, which again, I'll talk about in a moment. And then the Renier piece symphonique. So again, I, I don't want to neglect it. There are some spots that... The beginning of the second part is physically, that it's quite challenging. And so I will continue to do some of that slow, loud practice, that section, for example, I'll do it slow and loud, a little faster. Maybe once at tempo. And then the next section and the next section. So there's certain parts of that that I will continue to do that sort of sectional work, slow and loud, maybe speeding it up a little bit, making sure it stays in the fingers. Or for example, the very beginning, this little... Um... Slow and loud or some interesting rhythms. Try to make sure that again stays in the fingers it's yeah it's, it's quite a piece such an amazing piece really happy to be doing that one again as well and but definitely requires some practice to keep it in the fingers even though it's sort of has just been in performance shape recently so that's the first half and then the second half starts again like the first half i always think the second half should start with a piece you're comfortable with a little less necessary to be something to you can do with cold hands because at this point you're probably warmed up and uh, so this is the Godefroy the, the E minor E flat minor the 
etude. And I know this one again, I've played it for decades, but it's quite demanding on the, on the right hand because it's easy for the forearm to get tired because the right hand keeps going and going and going. So this time what I've been focusing on is doing some practice very slow and very relaxed, well, somewhat slow and very relaxed. So often the first thing, I'll, first piece I'll practice in the day is this. Maybe at about that speed, trying to remove any sense of tension in the arm, right? To be able to stay completely relaxed. And I think that's been, that's been great, that's been really nice. If I get a chance, I'll also do a little bit of extra practice right at the end where we get this. That is physically more demanding than the rest of the piece. I think it's just, yeah, a little bit harder and worth doing some, not practice like that, but some slow, loud, practice, strong practice, um, and some fast practice as well. So there's that. Then, ah, I'm bringing back three movements from Bach's first keyboard partita in B flat. I love this prelude. It's one of my favorite Bach movements of all time. It's so beautiful. And I recorded the entire partita in 2013 on a CD. And I, I might not have played it since, maybe, yeah, maybe 2015 I did some of it. Um, and so here I had a fairly short time from the end of Europe to the start of this tour, so I didn't feel up to do bring back the entire uh, partita. But what I'm doing is something I've done in the past, which is three of the movements. So I'm doing that prelude, then I'm doing the saraband. <laughs> And then finally, the jig, the last movement. This one is scary because the pedals, the, you know, it starts getting quite chromatic. Um, and yeah, the feet are flying all over the place. So uh, with that, with the jig, I'll do anything I can to work on getting that as solid and in the feet and fingers as possible. So some slow, loud work, sectional work, fast work, all of the above. Uh, with, the, with the prelude and the saraband, physically they're not as demanding. What I needed to do was get them in my memory. And so I did a lot of that uh, backwards sectional work. And at this point, they feel pretty solid. We'll see how it goes as, as the tour starts. But for now, um, I'm doing some of that, but in general, just maybe playing through them once a day, uh, hoping that they're in good enough shape that way. Then we get, ah, Claire de Lune. Now this again is one I, I learned as a teenager. I learned Grangini's edition, which of course has the, the harmonics, and you, I uploaded a couple of recordings of that. It's beautiful, it's an excellent arrangement. Like he's done some really smart things there. But it's nice sometimes to like, uh, a piece that one's played so many times to keep it fresh. In this case, I went back to the original piano part. Uh, just to, for example, to double check what the phrase markings are and pay a little bit more attention to the phrase markings. And so I've ended up doing it without most of the harmonics. I've kept a couple harmonics in right at the very end, a couple couple other spots, but for the most part, I'm not doing the harmonics. Just for me to keep it fresh, and it is a, it's a, it's a different sound, and we get a different type of control and different thing we can do with it. So, but it means kind of relearning parts of it. And actually in the concert I did in Mexico, I got to start, ready to start this, and I suddenly had a thought, wait a minute, what, how does it start? You know, it's uh, no harmonics. What, what is it? So 
it's always a bit tricky making changes to a piece you know really well, but it's a skill I think one should develop. Like I think it, you should be able to do it and it's good to be able to do it. And it, it's hardest at the beginning as you're trying to make that change. So again, I changed some of the pedals because I wanted to double up on B flat. Um, so working on some of that and then again, just kind of learning it, relearning it. And still there are some spots which, so for this one, there are some spots I'll still do some spot practicing on. And then again, go through the whole thing at the end of the day. And then the last piece of the program. So this, again, the last piece of the program should be, uh, to my mind, uh, an exciting piece, a great finishing piece. And uh, yeah, generally maybe somewhat upbeat as well. I don't know, I, I kind of like to end with something that's, that's uh, yeah, that is somewhat happy. Um, and this one, I don't know if it's happy, but it ends on a happy note. I mean, the, the opera is not particularly happy. And yeah, you might say, well, that doesn't sound so happy, but the main theme, you know, the waltz. Uh, is, is quite upbeat. Uh, the, the what becomes the main theme of this. So that is, of course, this is this um, uh, fantasy on themes from Tchaikovsky's opera, Eugene O'Megan. And uh, this one I learned in 2015 and I played it quite a bit for several years, but not since then. Um, maybe 2018 was the last time. But it came back fairly easily. Uh, initially a little bit of like, what, what are these notes? But it didn't take too long. And again, I didn't have that much time, right, to bring this back after the fall. Because um, I got back in November, I think. Um, so this one, I'm still doing some sectional practice, uh, both to solidify the memory, make sure it's all solid. And also physically, it's just like, it's a, you know, it's a listening for the left hand. of little spots to work on the the hands here right making sure that i'm playing it as well as i possibly can and keeping it in the hands so uh, this one yeah I, i'll do I'll still spend some reasonable amount of time working through this one generally from front to back i'm not so concerned about the memory on this one and then of course i'm working a little bit on some encores but you'll have to come to a concert to hear those and and there it is so then Having done that, at the end of the day, ideally, I go through the entire program to practice performing. So that idea of when you're first practicing a piece, you don't want to practice wrong notes, for example. But when you want to, when you get ready to start performing it, you want to do some practice of actually sitting down, performing it. And if you play a wrong note, being able to continue, right? To be able to keep going, as I would always say, always advance, never retreat, right? If you make a mistake, you don't want to go back and try to correct it. You want to go ahead. And you, you have to practice that, right? Yeah. So to sit down, in this case, I'm going to be talking between pieces. This is a couple English speaking countries, so no problem there. So I might also practice what I'm going to say, sit down, play a piece, talk, play the next one, etc. Get to the break, take a little bit of a break myself, right? The intermission and then come back and do the second half and do that sort of performance practice. Of course, I'll also, not only for that, but during the day now, I'm not right at the moment because I'm filming this and I wanted to show you these, but I will be wearing my harp shoes, right? Which are these sort of thin soled dance shoes that I, I've shown before. And so when I normally practice, I'm practicing in socks if it's cold or bare feet if it's warm. But as it gets closer and closer to a performance, I will definitely wear the shoes at least to make sure that it's feeling comfortable because there can be that sensation of suddenly if you're wearing the, the, the shoes you're going to wear at the performance for the first time, 
maybe suddenly the feet feel like they don't know where to go and what it feels different and that can really throw you off in a, in a fast pedal change piece so wearing the shoes once i start touring once i start performing and i know everything is okay i won't generally practice with my shoes on then because I'll have done enough practice that it'll be fine and it's a bit of a pain to put them on and off but for now trying to practice with them on just to get that sensation and then finally recording myself and I don't do this enough I don't do this enough because again it's a matter of time and sort of triage and and it doesn't necessarily help with a physical aspect like training as a as an athlete right it's not training the fingers per se but it's really important to record yourself and 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 I, I just did that earlier i'm going to listen back and check in is that part that you think you're playing so beautifully is it actually beautiful um how's your tempo are you staying consistent where you want to stay consistent how how's your volume level how's your phrasing how's everything sounding and this is so important especially if you're not working with a coach or a teacher to do this and check in and make sure things are sounding the way that you want them to sound and it also gives you a little bit of that that experience of a performance and so again if especially the newer you are to performing if you are preparing for a performance to to record yourself not just audio but put a camera or a phone there and video yourself which kind of gives that adrenaline and excitement of a performance or invite your friends or family to come and listen to you whether it's the full program or a few pieces to try and as I say you can't really get the experience in my I feel I can't really get the same experience in the practice room as one gets on stage but you can get close you can kind of get uh, build up a little bit of that sense of okay this is what it feels like to play this piece when I have an audience and so yeah I highly recommend doing what you can to experience that so that's, yeah, that, that's, that's kind of a look at what I'm doing with this particular program and what in general I would do to prepare a piece uh, for a concert tour. And if you're in Australia or New Zealand, I hope I will see you soon. I will be continuing to try and film Harp Tuesday episodes as well as doing some travel vlogs. So I will see you on YouTube, regardless of where you are, soon as well. Cheers. <laughs>